Alright. Uh, hi everybody, today we're going to be working on the review guide for the stand level finals. It's pretty quick and easy and we're going to try to knock it out all in one big video. We got question number one and ultimately we're trying to find this angle A. That's real easy. This is a non-right triangle. You're allowed to do sine rule or cosine rule with non-right triangles. And since they give us the opposite angle with its opposite side, we got to do the sine rule. So the sine rule is going to be opposite over opposite is equal to the opposite over opposite, meaning this thing right here. Let's zoom in on that. Feel free to pause the video at any point. So the opposite is going to be 15 degrees over 4.5. And then it's going to be A over 6. So I'm looking at this guy. It's going to be the sine of 15 over 4.5. It's equal to the sine of A over 6. Multiply both sides by 6. Take the sine inverse of both sides, and A is equal to 20.19 degrees. Be sure your calculator is set to degrees. Okay. Keep going. Point B is on the ground, and it's 5 meters from point E, and he's 1.8 meters tall. He's going to walk towards it, and he's going to hit the sensor. How far away is he from his house? Okay, well, this is going to require a little bit of uh, drawing, you know, and a little bit of critical thinking. Okay, we know that the distance from B to E is 5. He's going to be 1.8 meters tall when he touches the sensor. And we got to figure out what this angle is right here. Now, I have my work already shown here, but let's just suppose we don't know that yet. Okay, all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if that guy's 15 and that's 20.19, 180 minus those two guys is going to give me 144.81. I also know that the angle of a straight line is 180 degrees. So if this angle on the left is 144.81, this angle on the right has to be 35.18. Now I look at this triangle, and it's a this little orange, black, black triangle, this thing I'm pointing at, is a right triangle. I am allowed to do two things with right triangles. That is the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or I can do so ka toa. In this case, I have 35.18 degrees and I have the opposite side. I would really like to know the adjacent side because if I know the adjacent side, then I could just say, hey, 5 minus that adjacent side. And that'll give me x. Well, opposite over adjacent, that's tangent. So I'm going to say tangent of 35.18 is equal to 1.8 over y. You know, multiply both sides by y, divide both sides by tangent of 35.18, and you get 2.554. Once you have that, you have to say 5 minus 2.554, and you will get 2.447. That is the correct answer. Cool. This diagram shows a straight line between these two points and C. Find the gradient of L. Um, the gradient of L is rise over run. So I got to take the change in Y divided by the change in X. Okay. So Y1 minus Y2 divided by X1 minus X2. You simplify and you get 1 over 2. M is the midpoint. Find the coordinates of point C. Well, if this is the midpoint, then the distance on the left is the same as the distance on the right. So negative 9 and negative 3 has a distance of 6. So i got to say negative 3 plus 6 is 3. Also, the distance from negative 1 to 2 is 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So 3, 5. L2 is perpendicular to L1, and it passes through M. Find that equation. No problem. Well, if it's perpendicular, then the slope has to be the negative reciprocal, right? Meaning I have to change the sign and I have to flip it up, upside down. Again, if it's a perpendicular slope, you change the sign and you flip it upside down. Okay? So you're going to get negative 2. Now, I'm doing it this way. You do it any way you want. You get the same answer in the end. I use point gradient form, where I take my midpoint, it says the midpoint is on the line, so uh, what negative 3, 2. So I plug it in and I solve. I'll multiply both sides by x plus 3, 
get everything over to the left, simplify, and I get 2x plus y plus 4 equals 0. Piece of cake. The point k4 is also on L2. Find the value of k. This is super easy because I already have my equation. I can just plug in k4. Everywhere I see an x, I'll put a k. Everywhere I see a y, I'm going to put a 4. 2k plus 8 equals 0. You know, simplify a little bit. Divide both sides by 2. k equals negative 4. Find the distance between points M and N. This is the distance formula, which is just going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. When you simplify that, you're going to get 2.236. You use that, you put it in your calculator, you get 2.236. Very nice. Given that the length of AM is the square root of 45, find the area of the triangle ANC. Well, zoom in on this little triangle right here, okay? So I got a perpendicular line right here, and it's going to be ANC, so this triangle. It has a height, well, we already know this distance is 2.236, okay? And we have a, well, we got a little bit of the base of the square root of 45. Well, I know that this is the midpoint, so this is half of the distance there. So this is half of the base. Half of the base of the square root of 45. Oh, that's easy. I'm going to use the formula of the area of a triangle, which is 1 half base times height. Well, the height is 2.236, and the half of the base is the square root of 45. If you use the entire decimal and you don't round as you go, the answer should exactly be 15. It exactly equals 15. All right, in an arithmetic sequence, the first term is negative 5, and d is equal to 3. Find the eighth term. Here we're going to use the formula for the, you know, the general uh, arithmetic sequence, where the nth term is the first term, plus n minus 1 times d, where d is the common difference. Plug it in. Negative 5 goes there. 3 goes there, and this is the 8th term, so n equals 8. The answer should be 16. All right, the following box of Mushka plots shows the number of text messages sent by students in a school on a particular day. Box of Mushka plot is very easy to read. This is the minimum. This is the first quartile. This is the median. This is the upper quartile, and this is the maximum. Quartiles are easy. Uh, I am going 25% of the way through the data at each point. So this is the bottom 25%. This is the bottom half. This is the next 25%. And this is the next 25% of the data, if I'm going from least to greatest. Now the range is going to be 39 minus 0. It's the maximum minus minimum. But the interquartile range is going to be the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. The upper quartile being 11 and the lower quartile being 4. So 11 minus 4 should be 7. One student said k text messages where k is greater than 11. Given that k is an outlier, find the least value of, seven, uh, of k. No problem. The definition of an outlier is always the same. It is 1 half times the interquartile range past one of the quartiles. Okay, so if it's the lower quartile, you got to go to the left of the lower quartile. If it's the upper quartile, like this one is, you have to go to the right of the upper quartile. So you got to go 1.5 times 7, which is the interquartile range again, plus 11. When you do that, you get 21.5. So the very next number of text messages that exceeds 21.5 should be 22. Piece of cake. Each month, the number of days of rain in Cardiff is recorded. The following data was collected over a period of 10 months. Notice that all the data is really jumbled up and messed up. For these data, the median number of days of rain per month is 10. Find the value of x. Well, let's look at this very carefully. We have 10 pieces of data, right? And the median is always going to be the average of the two middle numbers. So in this case, the two middle numbers would be the fifth one and the sixth one. Well, if I were to arrange this in order, Okay, if I were to arrange this in order, I am going to get 7, 8, 8, 8, 
x, 11, 11, 13, 14, 15. So I don't know where that x is going to go, but if it were 11 and 11, the median would be 11, which it's not. Okay? If it were uh, 11 and 8, that would not work because that's not 10. The only way that this would work is if there were a 9 right there. So x has to equal 9. Okay, 9 plus 11 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So x has got to equal 9. This one's going to be the standard deviation. The best way to do this is to uh, type in all your data, including the 9, into L1. And you're going to go to stat, li uh, no, I'm sorry, second list math. And then select standard deviation of L1. Okay? Select standard deviation of L1. So when I do that, uh, second list, math, standard deviation of... Second list, math, standard deviation, L1, I get 2.836. Piece of cake. Okay, the histogram shows the time uh, in minutes that it takes the customer to eat their lunch on a particular day. That should be eat, not each. Each customer took less than 25 minutes, and this histogram's incomplete. Write down the mid-interval value for, t uh, for you know, 10 is less than or equal to t is less than 15. We did this in class a long time ago because the way we put this in our calculator is we have to put the middle number of the histogram. That's the mid-interval value. So in this case, the middle number between 10 and 15 is 12.5. Just think in terms of money. What's the halfway point between $10 and $15? 12.5. The mean time it took all customers to eat their lunch was estimated to be 12 minutes. Keep note of that number. It was found that K customers took between 20 and 25 minutes to eat their lunch. So this height right here has to be K. Somewhere in here, this is K. <clears throat> Write down the total number of customers in terms of K. All right. Well, I got 10 people here, 8 people here, 5 people here. I'm just looking at the, the value here, the you know the number of customers, and 10 people here. So I got to add them all up and then K. So when I add up 10 plus 8 plus 5 plus 10, I get 33. So the answer should be 33 and then plus the last group. We don't know what they are. 33 plus K. All right, now it says estimate the value of k. Well, I look at the directions and I notice that the mean time is equal to 12. I'm going to use this information to my advantage. The mean time is 12. Well, in order for this to make any sense, what do they mean by the mean? Well, it's the mean time per customer. So in order to do the mean time per customer, I have to take the total no amount of time divided by the total number of customers. Well, I already have the total number of customers. It's 33 plus K. But what I need to do now is get the total amount of time. Total amount of time is going to be, all right, well, 10 people did two and a half minutes. So 10 times 2.5. Eight people did seven and a half minutes. So eight times 7.5. And I'm going to add them all up. All right, even this guy, 22.5 times K. Add them all up. That's the total amount of time. So time divided by customers, that equals 12. Well, this is algebra now. Got to do a little bit of simplifying. So I simplify this first part. I get 322.5. Okay, got to get K by itself. I can't have K on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply that to the right. Fractions, I don't like fractions anyway. So I get 12 times 33.K. I am going to distribute the 12, and I get that. I can subtract 322.5 to the right, subtract 12K to the left. I get 10.5K equals 73.5. Divide both sides by 10.5K equals 7. K equals 7. Very cool. Next. A bag contains five green balls and three white balls. Two balls are selected at random without replacement. Complete the following tree diagram. This is easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, I got three white balls. So after I pull a green ball, I still have three white balls, but now I only have seven because I'm not putting it back. If I pull a white ball, well, I still got five green balls here. 
and uh, you know seven because I already took the white ball out if I took a white ball out here then I only have two white balls left so that's going to be that two over seven find the probability that exactly one of the selected balls is green well it only happens on this branch where I pick the green ball first or I pick the green ball second and I could have only exactly one green so I got to do this branch which is that times that plus this branch which is that times that no problem so that's gonna look whoa. that's gonna look like this okay 5 over 8 times 3 over 7 plus 3 over 8 times 5 over 7 when I do that I get basically 0 0.536 piece of cake. Next, and the last one, looks like I already did some of this. Uh, Rosewood College has 120 students. The students can join the sports club and the music club, blah, 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 blah. I got to complete this Venn diagram here. Well, a quarter of the 120 people joined both clubs. So that means one quarter of 120 is 30. Uh, one third joined the music club. Well, a third of 120 is 40. So if 30 are right here, 10 have to be right here, because 30 plus 10. And hey, I have 120 total, so 30 here, 10 here, and 20 here, that's 60, so i got to have 60 here. Nice. One of the students who joined the sports club is chosen at random. Find the probability that this student joined both clubs. Okay. Well, there are 90 people who joined the sports club, and of those 90, 30 people joined both clubs, so 30 over 90 is also 1 over 3. Finally, determine whether the events are independent, S and M. The only way that these two guys are independent is if they obey that one equation for independence. The definition of independence is that the probability of A of S and M does it equal the probability of S times the probability of M. Well, we know that the probability that they joined both clubs is 1 over 4. They gave that to us. We also know that the probability of M is 1 over 3 because they gave that to us. What's the probability that they join the sports club? That's the only thing we don't know off the top of our heads. So if I look carefully at this, the probability they join the sports club, well, there are 90 in the sports club out of 120, so that's 3 over 4. So 3 over 4. When I multiply 3 over 4 times 1 over 3, the 3s cancel out, and 1 over 4 equals 1 over 4. That means they are in independent. They are independent. And that's that. If you have any questions about this review guide, feel free to talk to me. It's pretty easy. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.